Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is you're watching from. I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAD Marine Mammals Research Association, and this is the first of our free lectures on QGIS. This is the first time I've given a lecture or a lesson in this format, and it's the first time that DMAD has as well, so you're going to have to bear with us a little bit, but hopefully it should all go smoothly. So this is going to be an introduction to QGIS, well, to GIS in general, uh, what GIS is and what we can do with it, and the sort of data we might use with it. It's going to be quite basic, but it might be a good refresher for some people. We'll dive, dive straight right in. Okay, so this is our introduction to QGIS, and rather unsurprisingly, the objective of today's lesson is to understand what QGIS is and what it can be used for. So, an overview of QGIS. In the same way that we can use a word processor such as Microsoft Word, or a number processor such as Microsoft Excel for word and number based documents, we can use GIS softwares or applications in order to deal with what we call spatial data. And GIS stands for Geographical Information Systems. So what does AGIS consist of? Um, technically it is AGIS, you'll probably notice that I just say GIS because it's easier but technically it is a GIS because it's a geographic information system. So a GIS, uh, not just QGIS, but all GIS systems, um, consist of data. So this is the information that we're working with. Uh, for us in, at DMAD, this can be dolphins and whales and also sort of shipping traffic, things like that. But just as easily, this could be sewage systems for a town planner. So GIS really is a wide scope area it's not just as simple as uh, a tool for biology it can be used by engineers um, disaster planners all sorts of things so the next component is the hardware system and this is where all of our data is stored and where our computer operations are processed so this could just be our laptop computer or it could be an entire network of computers or sort of the supercomputers that the university and the really big institutes have and finally we have our software also known as our environment and this allows the data uh, which is stored in our computer to be processed allows us to do use the tools that we have in our GIS software so whether that's uh, QGIS like we're using or ArcGIS which is Esri's version there's, there's hundreds of different GIS systems out there so one of the key aspects of GIS is the layers on the map um, and everything in a GIS system is generally representing uh, a real thing in the world and layers can be turned on and off to make a, a map either simpler or more complex and to show different things um, because in a GIS system we can contain far more information than we could ever show on a map so we can turn things on and off to show different things at different times. And to illustrate that point I've got some images of Montenegro. So Montenegro is one of the projects that we run in DMAD. We run the Montenegro Dolphin Research Project there. And if you look at the image on the left we've got the country outline of Montenegro. And you can see sort of in the southwest we've got Boca Katorska or the Kator Bay um, set of bays there and this really is the most basic uh, version of Montenegro that we can have um, I suppose we can have one at worst resolution but it's just the country outline with no information we can calculate the the boundaries and we can calculate sort of the area of the country but that's about it so the one in the middle we've taken the road network from Montenegro and we put the road network on there I don't know how well you can see, it depends on the resolution of your computer, but we have sort of main roads in red, and then we have our, our lesser developed roads, so our tracks in brown. And then we've gone one step further on our image in the right, and we've added all the inland water of Montenegro. So we've got our lakes, you can see the Black Lake up near Dermator, as well as Skadar Lake down in the south. So Skadar Lake's the, the massive lake that goes all the way into Albania as well, which is why there's that rather jagged triangular shape cut out of it and we also have all the inland waterways so we've got all the rivers and again it will really depend on the resolution of your screen when you can see those but you can see that we can turn these on and off to, to display the information that we really want to display and we could go further from that we could add more information 
but we're always at risk of adding too much information and uh, making our map unreadable or, or difficult to use for the end user. And how much information we show or what information we show will really be dependent on uh, what we're using our map for and uh, it will really depend on the end user. Unfortunately this isn't really something that can be taught, it's something you have to learn with experience uh, but we're going to do quite a few worked examples over the course and hopefully you'll begin to get a bit of an idea. Okay, so GIS data. So data is just another word for information basically. Um, but when we talk about GIS data, we talk about two different parts of information. So you can see in our purple area, we've got our longitude and latitude. So this is the geographical component. So this is a coordinate within Montenegrin water. And then we also have our non-geographical information. So that's sort of in the, the raspberry color that we've got there. And you can see in our non-geographical information, we've got the species, so this is a bottlenose dolphin, well, a group of bottlenose dolphin, we've then got the minimum and maximum group size, and the dates that it was seen on. So you can see we've got our geographical component and our non-geographical component. Whereas on a normal map, we would just have the geographical part. On this map, the GIS also stores this, the, the other information as well, so our species, group size, etc. And we have two main data types uh, when we talk about GIS data types. The first is vector data. So vector data is purely just a, a series of X and Y coordinates. Um, and we really just have points, lines and polygons. An uh, example of points we just had on the previous slide, our dolphin, that can be represented by a point. Then we have lines, which are things like roads and rivers and country boundaries and things. And then we have uh, polygons. So these are these are uh, enclosed line systems. So we're really looking at areas, field areas. So uh, example two slides ago, we had the Montenegro country file. Then we had the lakes as well. So they were both polygons because they're, they're sort of shaded areas, areas we can shade. Um, then we have our raster data, and uh, raster data is a little bit more confusing for people using it for the first time, I think. But basically, these are just data which are stored as a grid of values. And each cell within this grid has um, a unique value. So each cell has a value rather than each point having a value. Um, and you can sort of see from the example below. So this is from uh, Esri's website, so from the people that produce ArcGIS. And you can see we've got our polygon features, and then we've got our raster polygon features. So our polygon features are the, the, the sort of the very defined shapes. And then we've gridded that area and we've taken the most prominent value for each cell. So you can see where, where we've got a curved edge, so where the, there's not a direct, uh, a, an obvious um, choice of color there. So say between our blues and our greens in places, the whatever we've used to, to rasterize um, has chosen the most prominent color for each of those situations. Uh, one of the benefits of raster images that, are that many are taken using satellite photography uh, and that means that we can very quickly get a lot of information. Um, so for example, we can get information on, on wildfires and things. Uh, the downside of the raster data is that obviously we've got a bit of an exaggeration in the image here, but we do get pixelation generally a lot quicker than we do when we zoom in on polygon features. So it's just something we need to be aware of. So we've made a brief overview there of the different types of uh, data, uh, what GIS systems are, um, and what they comprise of. And I hope it's been relatively understandable for everybody. As I said, it was relatively basic, uh, and hopefully it was a good refresher for a few people. So.